Hi there, Richard here from OneSite Solutions. Welcome to this training video on PX Basics, uh, which is really just an introduction to um, graphics. So uh, what we're going to be looking at is, uh, this can, we can look at a file workspace. So it's the first time we would have uh, put anything into here, which is like a holding area for things that we're going to be using on our station, um, as well as other things. Uh, we're also going to be looking at something called the canvas. So that's the area where we put uh, all our components onto. Um, and once we put our components onto there, they're referred to as widgets. So uh, anything that goes on our canvas is referred to as a widget. Um, it could be, a, you know, like a button or a, a flat image or a dynamic image or a label. Uh, anything really that goes on our canvas is a widget. And we're going to be using something called the widget wizard to help us create these uh how, how these points are represented onto the page. Okay, so I'm going to create a new uh, view of my fan crew unit number one. So at the moment, uh, I've got a wire sheet. I haven't done a, a graphic here yet. So to create a new view, I can just go to my views, say new view. I call it fan crew unit. I can change my uh, media to PX, HXPX media. So this is my canvas. So from here, I can double click on this area. I can change the size um, of my canvas. Okay, I can uh, change the color of my canvas and, and, and things like that. Okay, so I'm actually gonna make that a bit lighter. I'll put a color on there just so you can see the color. If you didn't want, if you wanted to put an image here, you could do, rather than clicking on, uh, on here to choose a color, if you click on the drop down arrow here, you can choose an image or a gradient or a, or set it back to default. Or you can click on solid, it'll take you to the colors. Um, okay, so um, what, what I would ask you to look at is these uh, areas here. This is the bound ords area. So any point that I bring onto my canvas will be listed down here. It will only be listed once, so I could bring the point, same point on many times and it would just be one. Uh, ord up here uh, and then this is the widget tree so any if so if I brought the same point on 10 times you'd see it only once in my bound ords but you'd see 10 widgets down here so every time it's represented it was it would be listed as a new widget then we've got layers as well on the sidebar so layers you can create layers here um, to lock things down so stop them moving or you can make them invisible so once you create a layer you can select uh, the status of it here and then you you assign that um, that background layer to your points you want to be affected by it um, so before I bring any components onto a page I just want to bring the uh, something into my uh, files here uh, so I want to bring in some images which uh, I've got already on my uh, user home here so you're going to be grabbing them from your class lab N4 when you come and do the training. And there's a folder called images, so I can just bring that on. Um, actually, I've created one here, which I'm going to use, which is more or less the same thing. I've just added a couple of other things into it. And I, all I do is copy it from my user home and paste it onto my files. There you go. So I've got a whole list of uh, images there. Um, so I can just bring those straight onto my canvas. Um, like that. So if, if I, uh, if this wasn't the right one and I, I wanted to bring on uh, the, the other one, I, I could just double click on this and change the image name to number two. And that will just change it to the other one rather than bringing it on. So you can just do that. Do it again for number three. Okay. So you could bring an image on like that. Um, and there's a folder, uh, sorry, a palette called uh, for our graphics. If you go into the kits again, if I type in kit, so these are all different kits that have been set up for us. Um, and there's the latest one is called kit PXN4 SVG. That's what I'm going to be using. And in here, um, we have some lots of different images. Some are flat images, so they don't have any kind of uh, animation at attached to them. But others are uh, animated. Some are numeric built for numeric points and others are built for boolean points so they're like a two state graphic um, so I'm just going to drag some uh, oh, not dampers, uh, ductwork onto my 
uh, canvas. So you can get a preview as well. If you click on this little preview area, you can see what it's going to look like. Uh, so I want duct horizontal medium. So to drag it on, you just uh, drag it from left to right and let go where, where you want to put it. Then you can move it around, put it where you want it to be. Uh, there's a duct <coughs> end left. I want to put that on there as well. And a duct end right. So this is going to be my fan core unit graphic. Okay, so um, if I look at the properties of one of these, it's just an image uh, here. So I could, again, I could just change that name if it wasn't the right one, or I could just bring on the right one. Um, so there's not much, uh, you, there's no animation going on in here. Um, so I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. So when I... Um, when I've done that, I brought my flat images. I can now start bringing on uh, some components from my fan crew unit. So if I go to my fan crew unit number one on my ground floor, open that up. Now I want to bring the fan on. Uh, so when I bring this on, I get this uh, widget wizard um, come up, and it's asking me how I want it represented onto my canvas. So these are all the different options here. So I can even make, make it as a label. Uh, and include PX file from palette, workbench view, properties, or actions. So obviously, uh, if you want it to be a label, you just go for this bound label. Um, this is the format of your label. Uh, by default, when you use N4 for the first time, you're just going to see a, a full stop in the middle of these two percentage marks there. So if I just bring it and show you what that, what that does. Um, so what it's done is it's brought on the whole out slot of my component. And it's brought on the state of the value, which is enable, and uh, and the status, which is over overridden at eight. So if I bring that on again, same point, and change my format to um, out, which is my out slot, and then dot value, that will then just change it to the value. So that's that's what I really want for my graphic. It's just the uh, enable there. Um, if I wanted the status, then I'd if I bring it on again, I could just change that uh, format to out status. So that would bring in the other half of that uh, um, what I've got there on that widget. Okay, so um, so it's the out value I wanted. So I can delete the other two now. So you can see in my uh, my bound ords, if I right click on it, it'll show me where it is on the on the page, and uh, it will show me where it is in the widget tree as well. So let me add uh, my filter now. So I'm going to use my out value, so I can now go back to my out value on my drop down. Status is uh, if there's any colors uh, attached to that. Uh, component so if, if, if there's an alarm and you had like your red colors your orange colors um, if I override it um, you can have them any colors any kind of workbench colors will come through and if you've got an alarm associated with that component and you choose color and blink it will blink the whole time it hasn't been acknowledged so once it's acknowledged it will still be red if it's still an alarm uh, but it won't be flashing anymore blinking anymore now I'm just going to choose color on this one just to show you uh, so here's my filter status, or oh, sorry, value. If I now right click on my filter, and uh, even when it's in edit mode, this will work. If I override it to active, you see now it's gone purple. So now I've got two uh, ords, so I can now click on these and see exactly where they are in my widget tree and uh, where they are on my canvas as well. Okay, so if I bring on uh, my calling valve, uh i changed that status um the hyper all the hyperlink does uh it will copy the ord into the hyperlink and i'll show you what so this is like a small uh mini area of my property sheet so i can set all these things up before i deploy it uh onto my canvas but if i just add the hyperlink i'll show you what's and i'll go to the property sheet of this so that's my um calling valve output value um and down the bottom here, this is my binding. So this is all to do with my ORD and 
uh, behavior of my odds. Um, and, and here at the top half of this, above this bold line here, uh, these are all the settings for that bound label. We're going to go through some of these things uh, in a minute. But anyway, by clicking on that hyperlink button just now, all it's done is copied the ord into the hyperlink. So all that means is um, when I click on that now, it's just going to take me straight to that uh, property sheet of that ord. So not very useful, um, really, for me to do that. What's more useful is if you had a, like a sense or a history um, you can hyperlink to the history. Um, but you can see how you can set these up as a hyperlink as well as just being a, a, a value. Um, so now if I have my heating valve, um, again from bound label, uh, I've got a mouse over. So I can, with the mouse over, it can be either the, the, out, the outline, which is like the border or a highlight. And so now when I mouse over that point, um, it will go blue. Uh, bring on another point, my space temperature. And I can select border. So with the border, I can either um, choose this top area, which is all sides are the same, and change the size of the border. So you can see this is a preview here of what's going to happen. Uh, change the color of it as well. You can see it, that's how it's going to look. Or I could say each side is going to be different, and then I could choose, uh, I can make all the sides different. So you can see that's now thinner on the sides. and change uh, the color of it as well. Okay, so you can see that's how it's going to look. So if I put it on there like that, you can see it's not that. It's not how I would normally do it, but you can see how you can change the size of each um, side of the border. Okay, so if I um, bring it on one final time, if I bring on my uh, space set point, choosing bound label still, I don't want the border. Um, the last option is make display name label. So when I bring it on this time, it will bring on uh, the name as well as um, the output value and it's probably on as two different um, widgets here which is quite useful because now I can go into here um, and change my name just by putting a space in there to make it a bit more friendly you know when for the user when they're look, reading it okay so that's bringing things on as a bound label once you've brought all these points on uh, you can highlight them all and edit them all you can also uh, align them using this uh, these tools at the top so I can align them left right centered all sorts of things there um, so I've just aligned them all at the bottom so they've all lined up I can also right click on these and say edit properties and I can edit them all together so I could just change all the backgrounds to white um, I could change the foreground color on all of them uh, I can have them all aligned to the left um, and I'd put some padding as well. This padding is quite useful, so you can uh, you can choose how many pixels it's going to stand off the left-hand side. Oh, I've done it in the wrong place. Off the left-hand side there. Uh, so you can, like I say, you can use a uh, um, multi-edit by selecting more than one device. okay so okay so now the appearance would be the same for all of those I didn't get rid of the border on that um, and this one's still overridden okay you can also um, highlight them all and change the size of them all at the same time as well which is quite useful and you can use your mouse keys uh, your left your cursor keys left right up and down to move these um, exactly where you want them Okay, so now I want to, if I had the same points again, and, and, and put some, uh, uh, use some dynamic images this time. So my fan, if I bring that on this time, and I'm still going to use this widget wizard, but instead of it being a bound label, I'm now going to select from palette. So now um, I select which palette I want to look at, so that I'm going to be using this N4 SVG, and look under fans, and then, uh, oh, not that one horizontal fans and if you want to preview you can click on this preview button 
So this is the one I want on my right hand side. Okay, now I can just put it on my ductwork. So um, before I do that, so when I added this uh, background uh, layer, if I change that to lock now and then select all of my ductwork here, I can right click on that and say edit properties and choose layer here and choose background. Um, and now I won't be, it's now locked. I can't click it and move it around. So it's, it's not going to move when I'm trying to position my other widgets on there. Uh, so my heating and cooling coils. So I bring my cooling coil on. Uh, that's my cooling coil there. And under coils, I've got cooling. So OK. And you see these are working uh, because this is a numeric value. When I double click on this component, you can see that one of the lines is animated because it's yellow. Uh, when I left click on that, I can see what the animation is. So I can see it's looking for a numeric value. If you click on these uh, three dots and then click on the folder, you can see what the images look like as well. So you can choose which image you want for each value. And with the Boolean one, so this is a Boolean value. It's Again, it's animated, it's yellow, but it's just a two-state animation. So some of these uh, graphics will work with booleans and some will work with numeric, um, but a, a numeric won't work with a boolean and vice versa. So you've got to be careful with when you're selecting them. You, there is ways of manipulating them, so you can use uh, a, a numeric value with a boolean status. Okay, so that's my um, that's all my uh, dynamic and uh, images on there. So now I can uh, align all of these. I can s select both of these points now, move them across. And add my temperature sensor. Um, so another thing uh, you might want to add is to this is your um, schedule. Um, so if I go to one of my schedule, here's my ground floor schedule. If I want to add that as um, I'll choose Workbench View, and you, you've got a, an AX schedule, which would be the whole schedule, or you've also got a current day summary, which would just be a day summary. Um, just ignore that. And you can see there, um, you can have that on your on your page, but that's using that Workbench View option. Um, and now when I click on that, it's actually a hyperlink to that schedule as well, to so actually take me to the schedule. You can turn that off if you don't want it to be a hyperlink. There's an, there's one of the properties of it is to uh, enable hyperlink here, hyperlink in active. So you could turn that off if you didn't want that. Okay, well, um, that's uh, a look at basic graphics. Um, I'm going to uh, change all this, um, smart up a bit. So uh, when you look at this on the next video, it would uh, it, it'll look a, a bit better. Okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed this. and. Um, Please subscribe and like at the bottom and I'll see you on the next one.